progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, welcome to What's in the Box. As you can see, it has finally arrived. It has finally landed. Bolt Action 2 is here and it has a new starter set. Mm -hmm. Named Band of Brothers. Yes. So, yeah, I, we can all guess where they're playing off on this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the whole Band of Brothers title also hints at what you're getting in the box. Mm, true. 101st Airborne? Mm -hmm. Well, Airborne. We'll not, we'll not be too picky. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I suppose, knowing you, you'd probably do them as 82nd. Yeah, Just because they were based here in the north. That's right. All right, well, first thing you come to is your brand spanking new, beautiful Bolt Action 2 rulebook. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a nice full rulebook that they've designed up for us. Oh, beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm. But this will give you every single rule you're going to need to learn how to play and what the changes are in this new version of the game. Also... If you want to know some of the other changes that have happened, or some of the changes that have happened in Bolt Action 2, mm. refer to our battle report. Yes, myself and John actually sat down, was it with Chaz or with Rich we did it? Uh, it was one Chaz. Of, one of, one it of was Chaz. Two. One of the two. But myself and John did get to play through a game of Bolt Action 2, so yeah. if you're wondering just how to play it without having to sit down and mill the rulebook, go and give it a watch. It'll be in the links below. Right, next thing that comes in the box. Mm -hmm. Instructions. We have some paperwork. Yes. We have some very important paperwork. Well, uh, if I break things down a little bit, mm -hmm. first thing we have is for the half track that you get in the box. Yes. Nice 3D instructions. Mm -hmm. This is something that makes a kit for me, actually just having that easy to follow instruction manual. Yeah. You then get this, which tells you what all your weapons are, who should be carrying what. Yep. Uh, again, a little chart here. What is this? That is your squad chart. So that tells you the squad makeup. Okay, so we're not going to have that moment of... Okay, I've built a squad, but I've put too many HMG or MMGs in here, yeah, or LMGs, or too or many SMGs, whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. And then we have this, which is the equivalent card the equivalent for the German for the German Grenadiers, mm -hmm. which actually doesn't have the unit doesn't makeup, have the same makeup. No, but I'm guessing that'll come in this next piece. In this piece, which is a beautiful Band of Brothers sort of scenario, yeah, booklet. Uh, well, here, uh, hold it up on the camera there. Do the jazz hands. Do the jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, so basically this this is your beginner's manual. If mm -hmm. you have never played before, or if you have a friend that you're just getting to start out in bolt action, hand them this. This will give them a really great easy references. And on the back of it, now there's something that they've included for a long time is play sheets. Yeah. But on the back of this, you get a play sheet that's actually on the book and not on cardboard. So yeah. you and your mate can actually have one each if you're both just starting to learn out. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, you do get your standard play sheet, which has two of the little cut-out tape measures, or well, yep. rulers. Yep. So if you're, again, if you're just beginning, have never played a war game before, you're pretty much getting everything mm -hmm. you need. There's also a transfer sheet for the half-track. Yes, 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 yes. You love your, your German transfers, don't you, John? Yes, I love the transfer sheets. Yeah, so I this is, I, I assume this is just standard Wehrmacht. Uh, yeah, it looks like it, yeah. yeah I'm not seeing any Wehrmacht. SS no. symbols on there, so no. this is just going to do you a basic one. Uh -huh. Next thing you're going to get is this, which is one of the great kits that we do. Uh -huh. it's the the ruined uh, farmhouse, I believe. Yeah, so nice modular little kit, which actually lets you build a little bit of terrain. So you've got, you know, blasted out walls, mm -hmm. burnt out rafters, you know, areas where you can actually set a little bit of raised ground. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to let you have a, a play about and a full play about at that with the terrain you're going to be using in this game. Yep. Attendees of our Bolt Action Bootcamp a while back, mm -hmm. a long while back now. Yeah, we'll have seen what we'll we're have, to do. We'll have seen what you're able to do with these kits and how versatile they are, so yep. keep, uh, keep a hold of that. Yeah, okay. You're getting a sprue full of all your bases, yep. which are nice plastic with a little bit of a lip for all your basing materials and stuff. Yep. Shall we just go through with the uh, the gaming aids before we hit the model kits? Yeah, yeah. Sure. And there's there's one sprue, see right in the bottom there? I want you to hold that to the end, because that's something a lot of people have been talking about. So yes, that one. That one. Okay. Okay. So we have those. Yep. Important thing in any bolt action game is, of course, your pin markers. Yep. And these are the nice little clip out, pop in, and actually mark out what your pins are. Now, one thing that we've done is our own set, the numbers here, we've actually just touched those with a little bit of white paint 
just a little bit of an overbrush just to bring them up and make it easier to see. Yeah, another way I would probably do it is the, the base of the pin marker, paint that grey or black, dry brush the white onto it and then leave the top bit that red yeah. so it really stands out. Yeah. Other gaming aids. Yes, you're going to get all of your, your dice and your order dice in this. Uh -huh. So from the look of it, you're going to have five American units, five German units to play against each other. Or it's probably just generic five dice per yep. side anyway. Yeah, but you see that gives you enough units in the game to actually feel like you're playing the full game, that you're not just playing a basic starter demo game. Yeah, so you're playing something a bit heavier. Yeah. Now, which sprue, shall, shall we just annoy them and just go with Give me the Germans. Yeah. It's, honestly, the German sprue is one of the finest ones they've ever done for bolt action. Mm -hmm. Those German grenadiers that you're going to be getting in this box have a lot of kit on them and a lot of versatility to them yep. as a unit in the game. So, if we go closer, we'll actually quickly run through. So, you've got all of your heads yep. for you know a little bit of variation. You've got some of them with the, the crusher caps, the ski caps, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You've got a cap captured PPSH here. You've got some knives, you've got rifles, you've got MP40s, which are a good time in a can. Uh, you've got weapon arms, which are separate from weapons. You've got weapons which are separate. You've got ammo cans. Panzerfaust, which is an interesting one because it has now lost its minus one to hit in mm -hmm. the game. So, you know, I've been looking around, there have been a few memes popping up of people going, you know, non shape charge loaded! Shapeless charge loaded, gonna fight her! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut uh, up, Carl. <laughs> that old bit. Uh, moving on across, we've got some more weapons actually just on arm, so you do have that option. Then we're coming to some of the guys themselves. So you've got the main bodies with smocks without uh, kneeling and standing poses. Uh, what is this? Uh, that is a spare barrel holder for an MG42. OK, awesome. Uh, speaking of uh, the MG42, I like this one because you can have it up over his shoulder as if he's just slapping it forward. Yep. Uh, moving on across, we have more and more weapons. Another MG42, which is separate from the arm, so you can mm -hmm. actually do a little bit of conversion work. You've then got the MP44, one of the finest weapons ever crafted. You've then got these little canisters, which are actually just a little bit of a pouch, but there's an interesting story behind this, if I remember it correctly. So, correct me if I'm wrong here, John, okay? Mm. Those in particular, on D-Day, were actually issued as gas mask holders. Uh, no, they were standard issue to all German soldiers throughout from the start of the war to the end of the war. But they were a gas mask holder. They yes. were a gas mask holder. Whenever people realized they weren't using gas in the Second World War, yeah. they actually just chucked the gas masks and used it to store this, that, or the other. Just yeah. spare bits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. German Grenadiers, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now the one we've all been waiting for. The US paratroopers. Go on. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so US paratrooper sprue. This is one that a lot of people have been waiting for for a long time because the weapons are now molded onto the arms. This was yep. a problem some people always complained about and always had with these kits. That has now been fixed. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of our helmeted heads and non-helmeted heads with different expressions and such. Yep. Oh, hello. Is this a guy with a mohawk? Yeah, there's a couple of heads there with a mohawk. Nice. And there's a guy there wearing a garrison cap. Uh, one guy's running around with a machete, oh, just cause. A giant machete, yes. Yeah, uh, we've got this, which is uh, ammo can. And ammo can and belt feeding arm for the 30 caliber machine gun. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up. 30 caliber machine gun on the sprue? Yeah, it's, and it, it's not a... Plastic MMG team. It's a plastic MMG team. Okay, that is a step I really like. How mm -hmm. many sprues of this do you get? Uh, you have four. So I could make four medium machine gun teams? Uh, no, because you need... To, well, well, you could. If you really want but it. A, you don't have enough of the larger bases in the box. Uh, they're not hard to get. They're not hard to get, I suppose. Is there enough men on the sprue to do it? Yes. Right, guess what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, moving on across, I assume this is the, the thirty caliber itself here. Yes. Uh, legs for the guys who are laying down. Yep. One guy with the binoculars. Yep. One guy with a Colt. Mm -hmm. Uh, standard bodies, so standard poses, moving forward, kneeling, standing at the ready, uh, all of that good stuff. Yeah, you also get prone in these. Mm. You get one prone guy on the sprue, which you don't get on most of the other infantry sprues. Yeah. Uh, we then move on to the, the weapons. We've got M1 Grands, we've got Thompson submachine guns, we've got... Ooh, is there a Springfield on here? I'm not seeing anybody with the, with the sniper rifle here. No, I don't see a Springfield. I do see a BAR, though. Yep, uh, I'm seeing Thompson machine gun ammo pouches, Grand ammo pouches. Uh, I'm seeing a few different bits of webbing here, which is interesting, because normally the webbing in the older kits was just, you know, across the waist job done, whereas in this, I'm seeing one that's sort of crossed. 
Yeah, the one that's crossed is um, two canvas, light canvas bandoliers for the M1 Garand. Uh, okay, there's one thing I've noticed here which I'm finding quite amusing. Yeah, you just noticed it too. Yeah, so you see right here? Yep. Uh, this is not a piece of military equipment. That's a pigeon. That's a, that's a pigeon. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a mil that's a piece of military equipment. That's, that's a lunch. That's a carrier pigeon. That's lunch. That's carrier pigeon. Pigeon pie. I'm it's happy. called he's called Speckled Jim. Speckled Jim. <laughs> he's been raised by their major since he was a nipper. <laughs> are you are you not sure would it really be Speckled Jim being an American set? Uh I don't know. Speckled Joe? Little Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fantastic spree. I think mm -hmm. you're going to be able to build some really, really cool units out of this. I think they're going to be nice and dynamic. I like the detail. I think it's going to be really good. Yeah. Okay? I'm not going to pass... I'm not going to have any other opinions uh -huh. until I have this stuff built. Fair enough. However, we have more sprues. Yes. Uh, give me the, the next German pieces. So, ah. we have a half track. Yep. So, we so. have an SDKFZ 251D-10. Wow. Just, just, just wow. As Mount, always, Mount, so. Mounted Pack 36. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on the sprue itself, you're saying you've got, this is the standard stuff. So you've got yep. main body, well, main chassis, lower hull, tracks on the sides. Mm -hmm. You've got the front for the wheels, which is the suspension for them. Yep. Uh, you've then got jerry cans. You've then got an MG42, I believe. And these, what are these? Seats, I yep. think? Those are uh, internal crew seats for the front. Yep, okay. Uh, moving on to the next sprue, you have the upper hull, two rear wheels for the front and a spare one to go on the front. Mm -hmm. You've got the seats for everybody to sit on. Yep. Uh, I believe that's the seat backs there. Yep, those are the seat backs. That is some stowage compartments which go onto the outside of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. A couple of little spare containers and helmets here. Mm -hmm. uh, sit and crew, which is a nice detail to have. Yep. Uh, wrapped canvas, gun shield for the MG42, another MG42, and I believe this is a radio antenna. Now for the bit that makes it special, mm -hmm. we have this. So you're switching out the seats that people will be sitting on because now they've got ammo cat crates and stuff here. Yep. You've then got the gun itself. Do you want to get closer on that? Uh, yeah, I can probably get closer on that. There you go. Okay, so uh, like I was saying, you've got the seats with the ammo stowage. You've got the guy who's actually firing. His arms are actually holding a shell to be loaded into this. Mm -hmm. uh, you've then got a gun shield that's going on to that. This, what is this? Uh, that is one of the traverse uh, wheels for it. Okay, and then this. Uh, uh, that is the other part. traverse wheel and the sight. Okay, so overall in this set so far, you're getting every piece of infantry you're going to need to get up and running. Yep. You're getting a vehicle so you can start to actually begin to learn how vehicles work in the game. Yep. Uh, I'm actually wondering, with this being converted out to actually have a bigger gun on it, does it lose transport? Because I know we did make a, a bit of a fluff on that recently with some Jeeps. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, it's just it's going to give you a great grounding within the game. Mm -hmm. It's it's a fantastic kit, beautiful set. Um, but we're going to have to go and build some of the, the American paratroopers, and then I can report back to you on how yep. this kit sums up. Not yet. There's one more sprue that I want you to pass to me. Oh, this one. And this is one of the things that people have actually been going on about. Mm -hmm. So the fact that now HE weapons actually have a template. Yep. Now this makes a lot of sense to me because time was that you would be rolling your let's say it was a a heavy howitzer, and I was rolling 2d6, 3d6, whatever. Yeah. I could have one guy getting hit with a howitzer and taking maybe seven or eight hits. Yeah. Which made no sense to me. Mm -hmm. So now with the template, it's just you hit whatever's under it, which yep. makes a lot more sense. So the actual template that they've used for it is actually quite cleverly designed because it's actually two concentric circles that you're going to be using. So it'll be one or the other, depending on what it is. And mm -hmm. you'll use the outer and inner rings also because you've got one inch circle, two inch circle. Uh, three inch circle, four inch circle, I believe, is the way this works. Uh -huh. I think. You think. You then have all of these as well, which are just little uh, markers. I'm not sure what they're for just yet. Ah, there we go. So you've got all different little status effects molded into it, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can sort of mark what your unit's up to, and you can see what they're doing a lot quicker. The fact they're in the shape of dog tags is just a wonderfully beautiful little touch. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> it's little things like that that just make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Okay, John, I'm going to send you away. You'll get these built and primed for us, mm -hmm. and we will be right back. Okay, John, you've got some of the stuff from Band of Brothers built. Now, mm -hmm. it's a starter set, so I don't expect you to build both forces. So can you run us through what you actually did build? Right, well, I've built a few of the, the paratroopers. Mm -hmm. I've built a, a few of the grenadiers. Right, well, can you, can you point them out to us here? Right, okay. So down here we have 
the plastic MG team. Mm -hmm. American, uh, yeah? Yep, this is the American. So I'll shift the Americans forward here. Okay, and do so that. Three so true. Bring me in a little closer, if you yeah, could, yeah. please. Thank you. And here we have them. Yeah. The paratroopers look amazing. They've got some nice dynamic poses. Hang on. That's what? not an American. I'm seeing an MP44. This, this did? Yeah. This did's taking stuff. <laughs> oh. What I, was, I was sat there and I was I was building away and I was like, well, every, most people have seen the Grenadiers by now, so I'm going to look at the sprue for some spares. And I thought, there's an STG there and there's a helmet there. Well, this dude's going to take those and he's going to be running away with them. Well, why not? So I've modelled him with that and the this beautiful pose of having the rifle over the shoulder like mm -hmm. that with the um, yeah. the shoulder strap and everything there. It's uh, brilliant. So yeah. I'm very um, happy with that. You've got one guy kneeling down at the ready. And you've got the commander who is, of course, pointing forward. They're over that way. Get the, them. The NCO is heroically pointing with his Tommy gun up in the air as he's charging forward to uh, glory. Yeah. And we have our kneeling guy who is carrying the BAR yeah. uh, for the team. So mm -hmm. the, the equipment is beautifully done. Mm -hmm. uh, it all fits really well. Uh, I will say a note to the painters. Yeah. Um, these guys are not Normandy era Paratroopers. These are later war paratroopers. So okay. These are like Operation Market Garden and up, basically. Because the so, uh, how does that change the color palette? Uh, it changes the color palette that the the jumpsuits are wearing are M forty three, if I remember, rather than M forty one, which means the M forty ones were more of a deserty, yellowy sort of sandy color. Uh huh. But the the M forty three jumpsuits are a darker green. Right. So your your palette will change in that regard. The equipment they're carrying is more or less the same, apart from their boots. Their mm -hmm. boots used to be the the dark. Beautifully dark brown Corcoran jump boots, the high leg ones. Yeah, yeah, the, the really shiny ones. Yeah, they then changed those to the uh, the buckle boot, M forty three buckle boot, which is essentially the infantry boot with a gaiter sewn I... onto it, which is a big leather band around the ankle. Okay, okay, all right. Our Germans then. Our Germans. Well, hopefully you guys have mostly seen the Grenadiers before, but for the sake of argument, we're going to show you a few of them built anyway. Yeah. Uh, so I built three. So. I've Got myself an NCO or an officer there with his uh, nice little crusher cap on. His crusher cap and his STG. Yeah. Equipped him with his pistol holster and other bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. We have an MG gunner here wearing his Zelt band as a smock. Yeah. Bit of camouflage for him. Got his MG over his shoulder. Yeah. You're, that you're a brave man building that, John. I don't want to paint splinter pattern. Uh, yeah. Uh, in <laughs> fact, if anybody has good tips on how to paint split, splinter pattern camo on your Germans, let me know because it could be useful. Yeah. Could be. Uh, we'll maybe have to look into that at some point. Our final guy is a regular K98 carrying guy. Yeah. No camouflage in the helmet and wearing all his personal gear in the back. His shovel, his uh, bread bag, bread his bag canteen, yep. water bottle, canteen. Stuff. Yep. Right. The bit we've been waiting on. The, the half vehicle. track. Yes. The half track is gorgeous. Mm. I love the fact that we now have that in plastic. So we have the little pack 36 there with the mm. loader uh, chucking a shell into it. All the internal stowage looks really good. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, it is our regular 251D half track, which is the, the finest looking one in my opinion. So Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, like, once this gets onto the tabletop, I think you're going to have a very nice balanced game against you and your mate to get yourself started into yep. bolt action too. Yep. You are essentially throwing an elite section of German infantry against more highly trained American infantry. So. Mm. You know, the, the Americans outnumber the, the Germans in the box, but mm -hmm. the Germans have the half track and support, so yeah, it, it balances out fairly well. Yeah, and, and from this, you can grow the two forces really well. Yeah, yeah. very easily. Um, a, moment, a moment of praise, shall I? Okay. Um, because uh, as far as starter kits go, this, this is the way I want a starter box to be. Mm. So you have the, the Grenadier Infantry was the first infantry that, that um, Warlord brought out, which had the weapons molded onto the arms. Yes. The paratroopers also have the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have two types of infantry in there which are easy to build, mm. don't require a lot of where does this part go, how does that part go, why is that gun hanging off there like that, why won't that fit? See, I don't, I don't know. I've, I'm one of those people that has never had an issue with having the weapons separate from the arms. I actually quite yeah, like it. Yes, it but, a little more flexibility. But take it from someone that is either A, not a modeler, mm. B, has never looked at the bolt action range before. That's a fair point. If you look at a two-player starter, always try and approach it from the fact of this is your very first purchase. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'll, someone, that has never, that. someone that's never even been to the games workshop mm. and you're handing them this box and going, here's a game for you. Aye. No, that's... that's a fair point, John. Absolutely fair okay, point. Okay, so and I'll, the, I'll give that one to the, you. the other things that you want uh, that I like about the set is that 
everybody has a set of instructions. Mm. The Grenadiers have a set of, well, it's a guide more than a set of instructions. Mm. The paratroopers are the same. There's a little bit of fiddling with the, the MG team, but you figure it out pretty quick. The, yeah. the images are good enough. And the half track has a set as well. Yeah. Um, plus you have all the other paperwork that comes with it, your mm. um, cheat sheets and yeah. other bits and bobs and your template sets. This is how, and I'm going to I'm going to stand on a soapbox a little bit. Are you going to plant your flag here? I'm going to plant my flag here and say that this this formula for a starter set is the way a starter set should be. Mm -hmm. Everything should have a set of instructions. Mm -hmm. Everything should have guides. There should be lots of images for you to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of background, a couple of friendly scenarios to figure out how your forces work. Yeah. Your templates, even your dice are included in the box, so yeah. you have a fully self-contained, ready to play once it's built game. Yeah. You know, just build the models and start playing, and that's all you need to do. That's the way a starter set should be. Mm. You're not all even right. having to worry about the quality of the models, because the quality of the models is fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, uh, tell you what, we'll call it that. Everybody, drop your comments below. What do you think of the new Band of Brothers starter set for Bolt Action 2? Are you enjoying it? Have you got over the fact that HE now has a template? I have. I like it. I think it works a lot better. Drop your comments in below. We'll move on here, and we will see you in the next video. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Keep your blaster handy. The West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at BeastsOfWar.com.